Thousands of people are on the streets. They are so much dissatisfied with the current government. Why are you not resigning? I think government uh, did a change a uh, few weeks ago, except Prime Minister, the entire cabinet resigned and a fresh team was appointed, mostly young people, new people, educated people and a smaller cabinet, 18. Personally, I was not happy with that also, even though I was also appointed to that cabinet. I was one of the one of the cabinet ministers who was appointed this time. But the following day itself, I went and told the president, I would like to resign and I advise the entire cabinet to resign. Uh, but he said, uh, let's look at these options in future, continue. So I continued, but even today, uh, I stand for a change in government and I'm sure the president is also thinking the same lines now. No, the people are asking the entire set of including president to resign. No, that cannot be done. The reason is uh, there's a constitution. If the president resigns today, like many people are asking on the streets, uh, when I say many people, we don't know the count. Remember, this president got uh, 6.9 million votes. I'm not um, undermining the protest in the country, but uh, as a professional journalist, we would know. That's not a number that we know exactly. We don't know how many people are unhappy in the country. So that's not necessarily a reason for the president to resign. Even if he does, if he resigns according to our constitution, then the prime minister has to be appointed president and he can continue for the rest of the term of the current president. But our current prime minister also cannot be appointed president because he has served two terms as the president before. So then somebody else from the cabinet has to be selected. So how do we know that the people on the streets will like that person? Then if they scream, that president also has to resign, this process will go on. So it is not going to help. Unless we join, do a major change in our constitution, right now we are not in a position to do what these youngsters are asking for. Sri Lanka used to be a model for South Asian countries and for many developing countries. What went wrong? I think uh, things started going wrong, in uh, my opinion, or my observation uh, as an economist, over the last 10 to 12 years. Until the war ended, for about 30 years, we had a struggle. Uh, war was affecting our growth, but as you very correctly mentioned, in many uh, social uh, indices, we were ahead of Asia. And after 2009, uh, the economy grew quite fast. In fact, if you look at uh, the, the tenure of our uh, former president, Mahindra Rajapaksha, during his tenure of 2005 till 2014, economy grew fourfold from US dollar 20 billion to 80 billion. And of which the second uh, tenure of his, starting from 2010 till 2014, uh, I feel we invested too much on infrastructure without really generating uh, economic activities. So though investment took place, money was not coming forward to pay back the debts. Uh, we borrowed something like uh, US dollar 5 billion short term debts during that period, uh, which became a burden for the government that came thereafter. Uh, but the problem was the next government also, 2015, 2019, didn't do much different. They also borrowed. They also they borrowed something like uh, US dollar 12.5 12 billion short term loans and added to the debt stock. And then there again, the economic activities did not uh, take place. So when it comes to 2019 end, when the current president came to power, uh, he was saddled with an economy where the economic growth rate had come down from something like 5.5% in 2015 to 2.1%. For no reason, no other reason, the, the rest of the region was doing very well. But And the, the foreign reserves had come down to about 76 which was about 83 in 2015. The rupee had got devalued. In all um, means, it was a weak economy. Then he got hit with the corona crisis. The corona pandemic affected our main uh, revenue sources like tourism, uh, foreign investment, exports, all those things. And that created a, a kind of a serious economic issue, a kind of um, uh, foreign currency crunch, which is the main issue we are facing today. We have a balance of payment crisis, which has affected every sector. But people would ask you, you are a government, you have experts, don't you think you, would have, you should have prepared well in advance anticipating this? I would say yes. 
we missed the point. We should have known, for example, 2020 when we started with the fresh government, uh, no one can say that we didn't have the facts. I mean, if you are a good analyst of the economic situation, you should have known that this is coming. The only thing that you could, couldn't have predicted was the corona impact. But even with corona impact, you should have done your simulation. You should have looked at different options. But unfortunately, the team that was handling economic affairs at that time, uh, I'm not blaming them, but the fact of the matter is they did not alert the president on time. They didn't alert the people. They somehow believed that they can so sort out this situation. And we are in this situation today. And that is why the president has now taken the decision to change his entire team, starting with the finance minister, the central bank governor, Treasury Secretary, the entire, uh, even, even President Secretary, the entire team has been changed. He has put in a new team. He has, in, in fact, invited some of our uh, uh, professional Sri Lankans who are living abroad to come and take responsibilities. Late, no? You can say late, but it is never too late. And as a government, you can't run away from the responsibility. A government is always responsible for the people. Now he has put a fresh team, a fresh cabinet. Even I'm new. I just took over. The, the rest of the cabinet members are also like that. Economic management team is brand new. We have to now face this situation. It's a difficult situation, but we can't run away from the responsibilities. We have to face it. What's your plan to revive the economy? I mean, the government is not here. Yeah. There, are, there are two things what you need to do. First one is short-term issue. Short-term, as I mentioned earlier, we have a balance of payment crisis. We have something like seven to nine billion US dollar gap to be filled. Uh, to bridge that gap, uh, we have started talking to international agencies like IMF, World Bank, ADB, etc. Our new finance minister and his new finance team visited the uh, IMF uh, this month and um, he has come back with somewhat positive response. But IMF programs, as you very well know, are not going to come uh, very fast. It will take time. It will take about at least six months. So during that time, they are discussing with these uh, uh, international financial institutions for some kind of short-term financing measures. And also we are talking to other friendly countries. India is already supporting with the Indian credit lines. We'll, we are talking to China also. So somehow we must bridge this gap and uh, manage the immediate uh, crisis. At the same time, uh, the, the long-term plans, which you always had, which are not effectively implemented, we need to implement and increase the revenue sources like uh, investments, export, uh, tourism, etc. Uh, you're talking from a government point of view, long term, but common man on the ground, he was paying 50 rupees for a cup of tea. Now in some places, 125, in some places you don't even get milk tea. How are you going to convince those people about the measures you are taking and how do you think he can survive till you get this help? It is, it is a very, very tough one. I mean, we all feel sad about what has happened today because at the end of the day, these poor people, it is not their fault that we are in this situation. Uh, whoever's fault it is, they are suffering today and there's no immediate answer for that. So what we are talking to institutions like World Bank, etc. today is how can we find immediate solutions for these people, the, 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 the poverty ridden lot first, because their needs have to be taken care of first. So um, a lot of discussions are right now going on and we understand that as a definite priority. And today, hmm. the health ministry increased medicine prices by 40% and it is the second increase in about six weeks. How do you think common people will, will be able to buy the medicine? It's going to be a very difficult situation, but one thing you have to understand is uh, <clears throat> We are a country, we provide uh, free medical services to the entire nation. So you have to buy medicine, yes, <clears throat> but most of the time essentials are provided by the government itself. This is not something that government is doing willingly uh, with the serious devaluation of the rupee. Since most of the medicine are imported by the private sector, government has no option but to allow this, otherwise there will be a serious shortage. But right now we are discussing uh, support from uh, agencies like World Bank to get some help on uh, uh, essentially things like medicine. And they have already uh, told us something like US dollar 600 million uh, will be coming forth. If that comes, we should be able to bring some of these prices down.
Now, again, going back to this question of I was talking to some of the protesters um, in, in, in on call face it, and they say that you know because we are fed up with the current political system itself because we, that is a it is not only some professionals coming and protesting. It's all about different sections of the society coming, spontaneous, apolitical. How are you going to reach out to these people? I think the diamond so far has handled this issue very democratically. I can say that because I was also of their age sometimes back. When we were in the universities, when we were protesting like that, that this is not the way those governments treated us. They baton charged us, they shot us, and they harassed us. But I, if you really look at you now the, this uh, gold face struggle, uh, uh, the protest has been going on for the 20 days, as at now when we talk, and the government has not disturbed that. Government has acted very democratically. Actually, that is the reason why it is growing in numbers. That is why people are, are coming freely to that. And um, we are listening to them. I think some of the changes that are taking place right now in the government is because we are listening to them. President is listening to them. I think cabinet is listening to them. We must respect their voice. And uh, whatever the changes that are taking place today and the changes that we are expecting to come are mostly because we are listening to these people. I think that's the way a democracy should work. But they say that they are not getting any convincing answer from the government in terms of how to bring the prices down, how to improve the quality of life, because so many people are finding it difficult to have three meals a day. What is the solution? When you look at the current economic situation, we are in a crisis, and we are not denying that. We have been very open. We have told the world that we are in a crisis. We have asked for support. Uh, in, that, in, in, a, in a scenario like that, you can't provide an immediate solution. So what we need to do is to we need to tell the people truth. I think when the new cabinet was appointed, when I was appointed as the uh, minister media, one thing I told president is, I'm going to tell the truth. And president said, go ahead and do that. And he has given the same instruction to his entire team. Finance minister is coming and telling the truth. And so at least some people will understand. When people understand, that will help us to uh, overcome the situation because at least some of them will contribute. Because if you look at the problems in this country, there are a lot of people who are responsible. The entire system uh, has its own weaknesses. So if you can educate the people as much as possible, I think we can start facing this problem in a different manner. So that has been our current approach. Some people would say Sri Lanka has been or it was living beyond its means, like your expenditure was more than your income. Was it one of the reasons why the economy went wrong? There are, there are, there's a truth in that in a way. Uh, uh, one is, as I told you very early, the expenditure, there are two types. No? One is the recurrent expenditure, the other one is the capital expenditure. The capital expenditure that uh, was spent on the roads, the highways, uh, ports, airports, uh, all those things, I would say, um, I, I, I wouldn't say that they were not needed, but around those things, economic activities did not develop. Factories didn't come up, businesses didn't come up. That is where things went wrong. When it comes to recurrent expenditure, I fully agree with you. There's so much wastage. There's so much inefficiency in the system. Uh, there are so many state-owned enterprises which are losing money. There are too many people in the government sector. And that is something that this crisis will help us to educate people and take some tough measures to correct. And you mentioned that you know the whole thing started in the last 10 to 12 years. But someone protesting on, in, in God face, they will say, okay, but the Rajapakshas were in power, then the Rajapakshas are in power now. So we are justified in asking them to leave because you started the crisis. At least any one of the Rajapakshas started the crisis. So we are here because of you. Are they justified? I think there's a little bit of unfair. I'm not defending Rajapakshas at all. I'm not defending anybody for that matter. I told you there were three governments who were responsible for that. 2009-2015 uh, government, then 2015-2019 government. You can't uh, let them escape. They brought the economic growth down and the current government. So when people say Rajapakshas did this, 
I think it is not fair. But then what about the people who brought the economy down from 2015 till 2019? What about the people who started this uh, famous bond scam in 2015 and started this whole saga of uh, high interest and uh, rupee devaluation and all those things? What about those people who uh, borrowed 12.5 billion uh, US dollars and we are paying those debts today? We are, we are struggling with those. So almost all those people who are responsible for this has to be held accountable, not only some of them. What is the future of the Rajapaksha? That I don't know. That uh, is for something. Do you think they still have the support of the CC? That people will have to decide. No, I, I'm a strong believer in democracy. Uh, I don't believe in uh, violence as a solution to the crisis. Uh, I think uh, we have to abide by the constitution, uh, stick to the democratic principles. And I think in the parliament, within the parliamentary system, something will change. Already some people are out, uh, uh, others also may change within the next couple of weeks. Thereafter, I would always advocate at the right time, at the earliest possible, we must go for elections. Then people can decide. Ultimately, it's the people who should decide who should remain in power or not. Now, somebody might ask you, when we don't have papers for school exams, how can we have papers for ballot? That's exactly why we can't have elections now. Though some people say, the president must go, prime minister must go, parli entire parliament must go. We can't do that right now because we are not in a situation to face elections. If you ask any party inside the parliament today, whether government or opposition, I don't think any, anybody uh, is willing to go for an election right now. The situation is not uh, geared for an election. I think we need at least six months to one year before that. So during that time, the country must be governed so for that, you need to have a stable government, a stable government which can pass bills, which can bring uh, new acts and find solutions for this economic crisis. So that is why President has repeatedly asked all parties in the parliament to come and join his government. Uh, they, they haven't done it so far. Uh, I think even yesterday he made the same appeal and he in fact said he's willing to change the entire government. I feel the responsibility of all parliamentarians at this stage is to come forward, take up the national responsibility, manage this crisis for the next one year, and then go for elections. But if they don't, if the opposition doesn't come, then what else can we do? We have to continue with the current government and face the challenge. That is what we are doing right now.